You know, something I think I don't talk about often enough here on the channel is my own personal inspirations for fitness. You know, the name of this channel and the blog that I started is called Be a Game Character. But I don't talk all that often about, you know, what characters inspire me or have inspired me on my journey to fitness. And I think that's something I should go into a little more. You know, I think one of my first main influences that I can remember is uh, probably Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I, you know, I was a kid of the 80s, so growing up I was all about uh, uh, watching them on TV and then there were arcade games and they all came out in the NES and stuff like that. And uh, uh, I think when I was growing up, Donatello was probably my favorite. Nowadays I would say Raphael, but yeah, growing up, uh, uh, it was probably my first inspiration for joining martial arts, in fact. I was like three or four years old and I really wanted to be like a Ninja Turtle, so you know, my parents went and signed me up for classes at a local karate school. Uh, and being there for a couple of years before I left, uh, they had you know some instructors split, you know, and a little bit of a falling out of the dojo. And I wasn't really into the instructors that stuck around, so uh, you know that was kind of the end of my time at the first dojo. But you know, I, I, I'd been bit. I had the bug. I wanted to do some more. So we went and found another dojo soon, and uh, I started working out there. Another big influence, of, of course, a product at the time would probably be uh, uh, Power Rangers. They came around for me right after my Ninja Turtles obsession kind of wore off. So you know. Going straight from Ninja Turtles to Power Rangers, I was all about those action Saturday mornings with, you know, all the fighting and the cool, you know, explosions and stuff like that. So, you know, wanting to be a Ninja Turtle and a Power Ranger, really my number one influence is for getting into martial arts, which was eventually the bridge for me getting into other forms of activity, physical fitness, rock climbing, weightlifting, stuff like that. I would say my first pure video game inspiration, though, was probably, um, I would say, Will. From Illusion of Gaia, uh, just because when I first started playing Illusion of Gaia, uh, it was a little easier than uh, Link to the Past, which was the other big, you know, top-down adventure game for Super Nintendo. So I got a little more into that first. So it was Will from Illusion of Gaia, who, if you haven't played the game, was this cool character. You could morph into different, uh, 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 you know, fighters from time. He could morph into Freedom, the Dark Knight, and then eventually Shadow, the uh, the Oro Warrior. Um, very, very cool character. Uh, had a magic flute he could play. He had telekinesis, all kinds of cool stuff. If you haven't played Illusion of Gaia, um, and I think it was called Illusion of Time in the European release or something like that, go check it out. But probably that was my first major video game like idol that I had. You know, the idea that this kid, Will, could save the world, and I was just a kid at the time too, so. You know, it, it was a concept that, of course, has played out in every sort of fantasy genre and, you know, book, movie, game, and stuff like that. But the idea that this kid, who kind of came from nothing, could go and save the world with his friends was just this really cool concept. And I, I, the idea that he didn't have to be, like, this, you know, super huge, like, muscular, like, super powered guy in order to do it was really cool to me. A lot of his powers were based on his, you know, psychokinetic abilities. And then when the time came, if he needed to fight as a bigger guy, he could transform into Freed in the Dark Knight, which was cool for me. But, you know, just, it, 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 he went off and went on these adventures, and my life always seemed so plain to me, and I was like, oh man, I wish I could just be like, you know, this, this guy from this game and go out in the world. And the other cool thing was that Illusion of Gaia was, it's sort of a, an alternate reality kind of game in that it's a lot of the stuff in the game is set in the real world as well. You know, you visit various ancient ruins and stuff like that that have, you know, real world counterparts. You go to, you go to Angkor Wat, you go to the Great Tower of Babel, you go to um, the Great Wall of China, you go to all these cool places that actually exist in the real world and they're all interspersed with these also kind of fantasy things. But so it, it kind of inspired me to look at life as more of just an adventure that you can go on rather than just this thing that you did. Um, Following up after Illusion of Gaia came Ocarina of Time. You know, I mean, I wanted to be Will for a long, long, long time, and then, then I played Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64. My whole video game world was changed. You know, it's, it's such a hallmark game for so many people, and I am no exception. I was all about Link. Link was the man, you know, and, and he had some similarities to Will, too, because in Ocarina of Time, you know, you had the Ocarina, Will had the flute. Uh, you know, you had the, the shifting from being a kid into a knight kind of a thing, so similar parallels there, so I just, you know, ate it right up. And I had finished Link to the Past at that point too, because it was a little bit older, but I, I think Ocarina of Time was really what ignited my obsession with becoming Link, which was, you know, something that stuck with me for a long time afterwards. 
Now Link, of course, continuing the, the fearless kid that can save the world, you know, idea is, he was even more so, he felt more real than Will did, even though he was set in a fantasy world, because it was a 3D world, you're walking around in it, um, all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're, you're walking around and, and you go out and you find these treasures, and I used to go hiking in the woods and pretend that I found these things, you know, and I was, I was just the, the ultimate nerd kid out on adventures when I went hiking by myself, and... Uh, I, you know, sword fighting with friends with sticks and stuff like that, all of a sudden they weren't just, you know, swords, it was a Deku stick, or it was the Kokiri sword, it was the Master Sword, or something like that. And then, you know, moving on further, you could just have this kind of, like, mindset of, maybe there is something just around the corner, maybe I haven't discovered that magic portal yet, but it could be there, kind of a thing, you know? The idea that you're just one step out of the ordinary, and that sort of thing just, fan you know, it was a fantasy that I lived in for a little while that was really cool for me because it allowed me to go out and see my world in a different light. Now, right along when I got into Ocarina of Time, um, I also got started getting into anime, and specifically Dragon Ball Z. You knew this was coming, all right? I watched the original Dragon Ball series a little bit, and then I really got into Dragon Ball Z when it came out, and uh, holy cow, I mean, you know, I wanted more than anything else to be able to fly around and, you know, shoot key blasts and all that stuff. You know, that was something that I absolutely wanted to do. And I would say that that plus wanting to be Link were my two big uh, um, fitness inspirations, I would say. You know, uh, not that Link was particularly jacked, but he was walking around swinging, you know, big hammers and swords and stuff all the time. Whereas, you know, Goku and Piccolo and Vegeta and all the characters from Dragon Ball Z were, of course, you know, huge, you know, muscles and super strong and all kinds of crazy stuff. So, and I still remember I, when I first started working out, um, I had no idea what I was doing. So I had my mom's, like, plastic three-pound dumbbells and uh, some Velcro wraparound leg weights that she had. And legit, my idea of a workout at the time, and I would say I was probably like 12 or 13 or something like that, my idea of a workout was sitting there and curling those three pound dumbbells as many times as I possibly could. I'm not even kidding. I would sit there and I would do like 300 reps of these dumbbells, okay? I would put the uh, wrist wraps, the, the, the ankle weights on my wrists, and I would curl them while holding the dumbbells to make the weight a little heavier. Um, and then I'd just do a, a numbers of sit-ups, like as many sit-ups as I could do before I felt like I was gonna die kind of a thing. And that was legit like my first workout. I'd do that and some push-ups and stuff like that. And that was my original like workout plan that I did for myself. And I remember I felt really self-conscious about it at first. So I used to actually do it like at night, like after everybody else had gone to bed, because I was at the time a horrible insomniac. I still am an insomniac, but at the time I would like stay up like all night, would not sleep, you know, worth the damn until like probably two or three in the morning. So I would stay up and I would work out. <laughs> it was just looking back, it's the silliest thing, but it, you know, it's kind of cool because that was my sort of intro to fitness. That was when I started getting into it. That was, you know, I was starting to get a little older. I was still into karate and I was starting to do judo as well. And I was like, you know what? I could get stronger. I, I can become, you know, Piccolo, who was my favorite character at the time. I wasn't a Goku kid, I was a Piccolo guy. I, I, I like Piccolo and I like Gohan. Um, but yeah, I mean, so that was kind of like my first, like, fitness moment of I'm doing something specifically to become stronger, and that's the only reason I'm doing it. Now, of course, the Dragon Ball Z characters also were constantly pushing themselves beyond their limits. So even with my ridiculous workout program, I didn't think it was that ridiculous, because I'm like, yeah, 300 reps or something? Sure, Goku did that when he was traveling, you know, on the way to Namek. He was doing the, the training in the gravity chamber on the way to Namek in a spaceship. And yeah, he did 100,000 push-ups and sit-ups and all kinds of stuff like that. So that totally makes sense. Nowadays, of course, I look back and go, well, that's completely, you know, uh, 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 ineffective programming, and why would I do that? But, but at the time, it made sense to me, and I'm like, yes, I'm absolutely getting stronger. Um, sometime after that, I found my dad's weight set. Uh, not that I found it, it was always kind of there, but like, you know, I happened along it and the weights were there and I was like, you know, I can start using this thing. So I asked my dad to show me some stuff and, and my dad showed me like a few motions, showed me how to do a bench press and an overhead press and stuff like that. Um, but that was, uh, that was sort of my bridge to real weightlifting. And very quickly, because, you know, I was in my teens at that point, I was able to, you know, basically do all of the weights. He didn't have too much in the way of weights, they were old, like, um, 
the plastic weights that you fill with water, he actually filled them with concrete because they started to crack and the water would leak, so he filled them with concrete. Um, but so, and it was just an old bench set, so I would, you know, I'd be bad. I would, again, no idea of proper programming. I didn't do any squats, I didn't do any deadlifts. I would do bench presses and overhead presses and like uh, uh, leg curls and leg extensions because the bench had an uh, attachment for that, and that was it. But that was when I started moving on further to, you know, somewhat realistic weightlifting protocol and I felt pretty awesome doing it too. From there, you know, I, I started actually learning and that I, I got on the internet and started doing some research. I got a book from the library, actually it's Arnold Schwarzenegger's Fitness for Kids book or whatever it's called. It's this, it was this great big, I was I was a library nut too, I spent so much time in the library, so it was this big hardcover book with a whole bunch of different, you know, I'd, uh, uh, instructions on how to exercise properly and how to be fit. And, great stories from Arnold Schwarzenegger from his youth and how he got strong and fit the way that he did it and stuff. It was a great book, I can't remember the exact title of it, but I got it and I read it cover to cover multiple times. And I got on the internet and I started looking up like, you know, workout programs. And from there I started to do some body weight stuff. Um, my dad's weight set I did a little bit, but again, it wasn't really like, I, I got much more into the body weight stuff than I did weightlifting at the time. And. Uh, you know, I started to become a relatively fit individual. I wasn't super bulky or anything like that, but you know, I, I was strong and I was fast and it was the first time in my life that I really felt like that. Um, and I continued continue playing video games and stuff like that and still my role models were probably, you know, Dragon Ball Z characters and Link. Um, but I would say that, you know, at any given point in time, I probably had some new character that I thought was really cool. Uh, at one point I know Samurai Jack was an inspiration. Samurai Jack is the man. I, the Jump Good episode led to all kinds of bad ideas as to how I could increase my jump height. <laughs> um, but, and, and then I would move on to other games. And finally, the real, I think the next real watershed moment was when I discovered Assassin's Creed, the Assassin's Creed series. And I didn't play the first game, you know, when it first came out, but when Assassin's Creed 2 came out and that was the new thing, I was like, okay, I gotta try this out. Everybody's saying this is super cool, I'm gonna check it out. So that inadvertently led to me eventually uh, founding Be A Game Character because as I was playing Assassin's Creed 2, um, you know, you as you go through the game you encounter uh, a bunch of different realistic historical characters, you know, because that's what Assassin's Creed does really well and it, this meshed again with Illusion of Gaia way back when I was, you know, first playing games it was like real world meets video game, it was like I was all about that. And I read, uh, I was reading at the time, The Prince by Machiavelli, because again, library nerd, reading books all the time. And I was like, oh my god, Machiavelli's in this game. I'm actually like interacting with Machiavelli as Ezio Auditore. And I was like, that's super cool. And I nerded out super hard about that. And then I thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? I could totally, I mean like, okay, maybe Dragon Ball Z is not realistic. I'm not gonna get super huge muscles and fly around and shoot fireballs and stuff like that. But Somebody could totally become Ezio Auditore. Like, that's not even off the wall. That's not even that crazy. I mean, granted, a few of his feats are kind of ridiculous. The leaps of faith are a little crazy, and some of the, the uh, uh, climbing and parkour that he does is a little crazy. But at its base level, Ezio is a realistic character. And the idea that you could design a workout program to become this character and start educating yourself to become like this character and whatnot, and that was really where it took off. And that was when I was like, hey, I should start a blog. Now at the time I was working a job where I had a lot of, uh, not free time per se, but I was on call. So like I would be at the place where I was working, but I would have a computer connected to the internet and I would just be kind of waiting for trouble to happen. And I have to go and fix things and I'd go back and be waiting for trouble to happen. And any, any IT guy knows the kind of stuff I'm talking about. So, um, I decided I would start this blog in my free time, and I did not start it with the idea of, you know, starting a business or making money at it even or anything like that. I just started with what, this is a cool idea, I like to write, I like video games, I like working out, I could do this. And so, Ezio Auditore was really the first character to inspire the blog, and that's why he's the first one that got covered on the blog, he's still the, the, the initial, the very first ever post. So. That was really where all of these elements, you know, I did I did the, the, the martial arts in my youth, I did the, the working out because I was inspired by games and anime characters, and it all kind of came together in this great confluence that created the game character. And the rest is kind of history. I've had, you know, off and ons. I tried to launch it as a business once and failed, and that was a real low point for me. 
but then I came back again and here we are now and it feels super awesome to be here to look back at that history and see what inspired me to get where I am today doing this stuff for you awesome people out there. So with all that said, I'm just going to leave you with one final question to ask you, what is your path? How did you get to here? How did you be, find this blog or this YouTube channel and get interested in it and say like, hey, I becoming a video game character would be really cool, or an anime character, or something like that. So, just let me know down in the comments below. I want to know. Tell me your story. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Remember to live boldly, change the world, and continue to be awesome. Bye-bye. Listen!